Hi, my name's Dan, and in this short video we're going to teach you how to set up a bridge using the Clearflow Beam products. So there's three products in this range, the Beam 2, the Beam 5 and the Beam Pro. The Beam Pro works on the 5 gig band, and that's usually for larger systems such as CCTV. Um, we're actually going to look at the Beam 2 um, in this video and teach you how to set up a bridge using the Beam 2. Now the process with the Beam 2 and the Beam 5 would be exactly the same, you just need to choose whether you're going to use the 2.4 gig, Beam 2, or the 5 gig band for your bridge. Okay, So it's a fairly simple setup process whereby you set up one device as a transmitter uh, and another device on the other building um, up to sort of five, ten kilometres away um, and, and that will be set up as the bridge station or the receiver. And once that bridge uh, is established um, then data can be passed between the two devices. It's like an invisible piece of cable essentially. Okay. So the process is twofold. Um, we, in this video we're going to show you how to set up the transmitter, um, which essentially is an access point. And then in the other video we'll show you how to set up the station or the receiver. So by nature of the product, because of course it is, uh, we're going to set it up as an access point, it could actually be used as an external access point. Um, so that could be considered for an outdoor pub garden or something like that. So. Um, Obviously it's important to, to remember that you're choosing between the 2.4 gig and the 5 gig band if you were to use one of these as an external access point. So we'd only recommend using the Beam 2 and that's purely because there are devices, wireless devices out there that can't scan on the 5 gig band. Okay, So if you were going to use one as an external access point, by all means, because they're weatherproof, but use the Beam 2 because um, then that won't alienate certain devices. So we're going to get this set up. So we've got our power injector which comes with the uh, in the kit. So I've plugged it into the mains. Um, using the PoE port and the patch cable, we're going to connect it into the WAN port on the underside of here. So you'll see there's two ports with a reset button in the middle um, and, a, and a tiny little micro switch on this side. So the reason we use the WAN port um, is because if we were to connect another device, um, another one of these or a CCTV camera for example, we would be using the LAN port. It doesn't actually matter which one you'd use for programming, but we recommend using the WAN. So the other thing that these uh, devices feature is a, what's called a PoE pass-through, which is quite nice if you're using it with a CCTV system. Um, you flick the switch across, connect your IP camera into the LAN port, and the power from the power injector is looped through the uh, the bridge and or the beam, sorry, and into your camera, meaning you don't need an extra um, a source of power. So the thing will boot up. It'll take a minute or so to do that, um, and then what we're going to do is search for its default uh, Wi-Fi or default SSID connect to it um, and then using the default IP address that's on the back of the unit which is the same across the whole range of products um, we're going to open a browser insert the IP address um, and then we'll be able to get to the programming screen and then we can show you how that works so if we just go across and have a look now we just click on our scan for networks so there we go it's already booted up so we know we found it because it's come up with Beam 2 um, so, and it, we can see it's an unsecured network because it says it's open. If you do encounter one that's secured um, the default password is ANTI, A-N-T-I, all lowercase, 12345 with no spaces or anything. Okay. So we're now going to connect, there we go, so it's connecting. So if we now move to our browser and insert our default IP address which is 192.168 dot one dot two hundred which actually will come up because we've done this before and there we go we've hit our login screen okay so it's important to note at this point that I haven't connected it to the network yet um, because all these devices are all DHCP and that means that they're prepared to accept an IP address from the host network so of course if I connect this to the network um, the network will automatically give it an IP address which will will more than likely be different to the default IP address which will make it difficult to find it on the network. Not impossible, but it means we'd have to scan the network and find it. So it's important to program it standalone and connect the network later. So, um, we've got a, a password protection. Um, so on the login, um, the default password is admin, which is actually on the back of the device as well. We'd always recommend changing that to something else um, so that uh, people can't access these devices um, uh, after they've been installed. So, here we go, we've got our login screen, uh, sorry, our, our main sort of desktop. We're going to set up uh, this device as a bridge, and we do that by clicking on the wizard menu, 
and now we've got a series of choices for us. So um, you'll see it's nicely laid out so we can see the bridge quite clearly. So we're going to pick the bridge option. And now we've got the choice whether we're going to set up the access point part of the bridge or the station. So as mentioned, we are going to set up the access point or the transmitter part of the, the bridge in this, um, in this video. Um, and then in the other video, we'll show you how to set up the, uh, the station. Okay, so um, at this point we need to obviously choose an IP address. Um, as mentioned briefly about IP addresses, um, is any device that's connected to the network must have an IP address. Now whether that's a smartphone that's connected wirelessly, whether it's the router itself, or whether it's a bridge or an access point, whatever we're talking about, everything must have an IP address. We always recommend setting a static IP because um, then it's easier to find it on the network later. Um, so, but you must make sure that when you set the IP address that it's on the same subnet or IP range as the host network. So you will probably need to scan the network unless you know already what the subnet is. Um, so the subnet's the first three parts of the IP address. So we can see here we've got um, 192.168.1. Um, we're going to change this IP address to 240. Um, the default is 200, um, but we know that our subnet is 192.168.1. So, but if you scan the network using some kind of IP scanner, if it's using a wireless device, the Thing app, which is F-I-N-G, um, is very good. Um, that will identify all the devices on the network, and it will also primarily identify the subnet because you've got to make sure that the IP address of your the new device you're bringing into the network has got the same subnet. So we're going to use 240. Um, we're going to move on to our wireless settings. So the SSID um, is going to be the, the, the name of the bridge transmission. So we're going to call it bridge um, so that we know what it is. Um, it's important to keep this secured. So if there's other Wi-Fi networks around or this is in, used in conjunction with part, you know, part of a larger network, it's important to keep this bridge secured and not allow users to access it. Um, so, uh, because of course, if you allow users to access it, that will compromise the bandwidth uh, availability at the receiver part of the bridge. So, it's important to keep this hardwired into the network and then secured. So, we're going to secure it with a password. Um, we're going to call it. Um, we'll just call it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for no particular reason. Um, we can choose um, how wide we want the actual transmission to be. Um, we'll leave it at 40 meg for this. Um, we leave it on an auto channel selection. If we want to make a manual channel selection, we can do that at this stage. Um, and the country setting, uh, in fact, only governs the number of manual channels available. We're gonna leave it on auto for the purposes of this. Um, we've got two more uh, sections to look at, whether we're going to adjust the transmission uh, power, and that's the radio transmission. Um, we'll leave it at 100% for this, um, but if you felt like it, that would be too strong, then of course um, you, well, that could be altered um, at this stage. And then finally we've got the launch range, So, and this is about how far we're, tr we're intending to bridge. So we can do up to, to sort of 10 kilometers with these devices. You want to try and optimize it as much as possible because the range that you're trying to extend to uh, affects how wide the transmission is as well. Okay, so the further you try and um, uh, beam it, the narrower it becomes, and obviously as you wind it back in, it becomes a, a wider angle. And in fact, you can actually um, beam from one to multiples as long as you can get them in range. So you could have one transmitter and say two receivers, um, you know, on you know, maybe two IP cameras, one on either end of a building, for example. Okay. So we're going to run this uh, right back to one kilometre. I think that's the lowest. Oh, no, half kilometre, actually, we can do, can't we? There we go. Uh, now we're happy with our settings. We've got our, um, our new, um, what we'll have as a secured SSID of the bridge. We're going to click Finish, um, and the process is complete of the transmitter part. So that on our, uh, uh, we would already fix this on the outside of the building. It's got screw holes there, so we can screw it to a wall, or it comes with um, some metal cable ties so you can strap it onto a mast. So um, now at this stage, we'll then connect it to the network. Um, so we'll see now um, how we've been booted off the, um, the Beam 2 default SSID, and that's because it doesn't no longer exists. Um, so we're now going to connect in our device to this port here, there we go. So now our network's been connected via the LAN port and we'll be able to just check and make sure that our network is um, delivering data. So check out the other video because that will help you to understand how we set up the, the bridge station or the receiver. Obviously if you want more information do go and visit our website at uh, antiference.co.uk. So thank you for watching.